Voters in the 4th Congressional District will elect a new member of Congress this year. This is the seat currently held by Joe Kennedy. He is running for Senate against Ed Markey. The 4th District stretches from Brookline to Fall River. It includes 34 cities and towns with nearly 730,000 people. There are now eight Democrats running for the seat. Dave Cavell dropped out today. Let's get to John Keller, who is introducing us to all of the candidates throughout the month. Tell the voters who you are and why you're running. Sure. So um, I am a, a tech and education entrepreneur. Uh, I uh, grew up in Massachusetts, was born here, went to school at MIT. Um, I've started three companies here in Massachusetts, uh, employing hundreds of people uh, here in Massachusetts. Um, I've also started up a nonprofit around education, uh, bringing tech companies to work with schools in Boston and with Mass Community College to make opportunity more accessible to people from low-income backgrounds, people of color, and veterans. Um, and I uh, was not planning on actually running for this. I was off running my third company, Covered Security. When I went to uh, hear uh, the then eight candidates speak, and uh, they were all fine people and have done fine things, but I've been very concerned that especially now, um, it's so important for people down in Congress to understand the the technology and economic drivers of inequality and understand how we can create new educational opportunities for people to access uh, economic opportunity. Um, and frankly, um, I saw none of that experience in the room uh, and heard no talk about jobs or and very little about education. And because of that, and because I don't want to leave the current mess to my kids and their generation, um, I decided I had to run. So Chris, if you're elected in November, What's your first choice for a House committee assignment? And what's the first bill you'd want to introduce? So that's a tough one because there are some uh, really good uh, areas, education and labor, certainly uh, energy, uh, energy and commerce, uh, science, uh, space and technology. Um, I think it would probably be education and labor um, because the first area that I would focus on is the comprehensive bill to create new collar job opportunities. People in my uh, industry, we recognize that technology is creating jobs in every industry. And they're jobs that don't necessarily require four-year college degrees. So I believe we need to invest in our community colleges and other post-secondary uh, one to two-year programs in areas like cybersecurity, user design, environmental technicians, areas where we have, frankly, tens of thousands of unfilled jobs in Massachusetts that people can't access because they can't afford a four-year college degree. So my bill would focus on how do we invest in those areas, make this affordable for people who can't afford four-year college degrees or even four years out of the workforce to access these opportunities with um, engagement with businesses as I've done with my nonprofit STEM match to enable the on-ramp through apprenticeships and internships. All right, speaking of jobs, as you know, the defense and military sectors are a very important part of the Massachusetts economy. And while the fourth CD doesn't have any large military bases, there are many residents of the district who owe their living to those sectors. It's been 15 years since Congress has done a round of base area realignment and closures, otherwise known as BRAC. Right. I, and there's a lot of talk that there might be a BRAC round coming up in the next Congress. If there is, and you're the congressman from the fourth, can you ever see yourself voting to cut defense spending in a way that might endanger some of those fourth district jobs? Well, John, that's, I mean, that's a very tough question, which I'm sure is why you're asking. Um, I think that we have to take a look at all of our spending, particularly now, Last year, we had a trillion dollar deficit for the first time. This year, it's who knows what it's going to be, six, seven trillion. We have to invest very wisely to grow out of this economic disaster. Right now, we have to print money to make sure that people don't starve, that they can feed their families, clothe their families, and shelter their families. But we're not going to print our way out of this mess. We're going to have to grow. And, if, um, and we have to be very careful about where that investment is. If we have to um, reduce spending in certain areas, I think we have to make sure that the spending that we do make creates one plus one equals three, creates more opportunity and more jobs. 
So my focus will be on um, how do we create those opportunities in clean energy in this district. You know, we've got the wind farm that it should be implemented off the coast of our district. Every single wind turbine is gonna be imported from Europe. We should be building those here. That's a potential growth industry. We should be investing, as I said, in education and opportunities around these new collar jobs. So we may have to make cuts and realign, but we darn well better focus on how do we put the money to work to create more opportunity for people in the district. I don't think that they're, uh, I think that they're linked. I don't think that they're separated, those issues. Chris, there's a lot of talk lately about uh, defunding the police. Do you believe that's a good idea? Um, so first of all, I would say that um, for anyone who doesn't believe that we have systemic racism institutionalized in policing, they need to look at the data. As I mentioned to you, I went to MIT, I'm a data person. The data is clear. Um, and uh, you can look at the FBI's data on this. Um, so we have to take action. I think we need to um, improve training. We need to reduce uh, the use of um, uh, approaches like chokeholds. I am a full supporter of Senator Booker and uh, Senator Harris's Justice and Policing Act. So I think that we have to take those actions. I'm a cybersecurity professional. Right? We look at things at when we have attacks and problems in cybersecurity as a system. You have to prevent, you have to detect, you have to respond. Well, we have to recognize that the police are involved in many of those aspects, but there are many other things that that take uh, that uh, are involved in preventing, detecting, and responding. I think it makes full sense for us to look at the whole picture and figure out if we're making our investments in the right areas to deliver a better quality of life for our people. And I think that every, um, uh, every community should be doing that. And I think that's what the communities uh, should be doing. Well, we are posting interviews with all of the candidates on our website, cbsboston.com. And stay with CBSN Boston and WBZ TV for campaign 2020 coverage. The state primary is Tuesday, September 1st. Vote by mail applications are due by August 26th.